Hello tech friends. What we've got today is this, a Casio FX 730p and in the top right hand corner you might just be able to see there it says personal computer which is quite an audacious claim for something that came out in about 1986. So you might have your ZX Spectrum, probably 128k by that point or a Commodore 64 or something like that. You'd also have your calculator, whether that was a bog standard basic one or one with lots of scientific functions, or you smash them together and put it in a box that's, you know, about the size of a regular scientific calculator, but obviously much smaller than a than a Spectrum or, or you know, other home computers at the time, and a tiny display. So let's have a little look around this and see what this thing is capable of. I've been having a bit of a play with it. Um, we've got on the top here an interface port. And I've seen this used with a printer and a tape loading uh, sort of connection. So you can load and save basic programming um, as well as just using it on the device itself. Um, when I got this, it actually still had the plastic film on the back. Um, so peeling that off was pretty fun. There's a little contrast knob there. So let's have a little look around and see what it can do. Now, we've obviously got our normal numeric interface there. And if I just adjust the contrast so I can actually see it at the same time, is that still visible? Yes, looks okay. Uh, we can obviously do um, maths if I actually put in the correct functions there. We've also got um, F here on the keyboard, um, shifts everything up into these blue charactered items here. So sine, uh, cos and tan and all that stuff. Um, and a few other more sort of basic related um, functions, which is usable for basics. If I put in sin and I stick a number in, it, you know, does the calculation. So all that stuff is sort of standard from a um, from a scientific calculator point of view. But where this thing really takes off, you see above these keys here, we've got P1, P2, P3. Those are all the different programs that you can have. If I press mode along the top here, and I press one, which takes us into write mode, you're presented with all the programs that are actually in the system at the moment. So they would say one, two, z sorry, zero, one, two, three, four, all the way up to nine. Um, where it's blank, it means there's already a program in the memory there in that slot, but two to eight don't have anything in. And then we've got something in nine at the end. And we've got the amount of memory free at the top there, five, six, nine, one. I'm not sure if that's in bytes or whatever, but it does obviously doesn't have a lot of memory in here. Um, but the usual sort of things do work. So if I, um, the combination of keys is a little bit unusual in here. So if I press S, which then triggers all the red writing, and I say P0, and then I type in list, I get the actual program that I've input in here. What's your name? And if I scroll down, it will show you line 20 then, print hello in, that, in the variable that I've actually written in there. So let's just run that very quickly. So if I press mode, and zero that takes us into run mode and then i think you just type run there we go what's your name i'm gonna say my name is billy and it says hello billy so that you know bearing in mind there's a memory going on here that's pretty impressive i think um you know there's not a lot of storage on here but um i haven't replaced the batteries or anything but i think it takes um what does it say here Oh yeah, they're like um, watch battery, sort of large um, coin batteries. So CR2032 and CR1220s. Um, so not too bad at all. So I'm just gonna turn it off and turn it on again. Um, always useful if you ever need to uh, get something to work when it wasn't previously working. So I'll just, um, there's, you, you can obviously write quite long programs in this. And in the manual for this personal computer, which is about 200 pages long or so, um, there's an example program in there 
um, which is a horse racing game where you select numbers of players and you put bets on and you race these horses <laughs> and then you could see if you want to keep going, you know, until all your money's gone, I guess. Um, and so it was about, um, well, let's take a little look and see how many lines of code um, were actually in there. So I've put this into program number nine. So if I go to mode right, um, and I select program nine, and then I type in list for this one, and we can, if I tap my way through this, I mean, it's quite long, this one. Um, and so the actual experience of typing things out on, oh my gosh, I better delete that. I don't want to, uh, um, it's bis, 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 bis. Um, make sure I'm um, not overwriting any of this code. <laughs> um, the actual experience of typing in the program was actually pretty straightforward once you get used to it. I mean, there's a lot of um, uh, commonly used characters that you would use um, which are immediately available. So, for instance, that line there, 250 for J equals 1 to P. Um, we've got um, the equal sign to be able to type that sort of stuff in um, and then we've got quotation marks and the dollar sign up here which is they're all accessed by pressing s and then any of the corresponding keys um, you've also got the ability kind of like on the spectrum where you would be able to type in a keyword so um, if I just have a look here we are bottom left hand corner here um, I'm not sure if you can see that but it says print above there so that would type out the entire word print um, but that's not really, you know, you can just type the word out itself. So it's kind of like a combination between a Commodore 64 and a Spectrum um, with the benefits of both and no screen. There we go. <laughs> that's, that's the way to, that's the way to describe it. Well, should we give this um, game a little go? Uh, let's do it. Oh, I think I need to make sure I'm in the right, um, the right mode. Let's turn it off and on again. That's always a good good move isn't it so mode uh run and i want to run program nine here we go so it's also got a speaker in here and it's pretty chilling um so let's say um two all players have twenty dollars i'd like to have been able to say that all all players have 20 pounds but there wasn't a pound sign that i can see then you've got your four horses here and they've all got different odds against them so highly unlikely to win 15 to 1 i guess 9 to 1 3 to 1 5 to 1 and they're all represented by these little symbols here from uh from the deck of cards so let's pick the first one um and i want to put in i'm gonna go all night let's put 20 pounds in player two has 20 dollars whatever um i'm gonna go for horse number four and they're gonna put in 20 as well and now we start the race is on so how does it display this this is a clever little loop, isn't it? So what you've got here are the horses being represented, move from left to right. Um, and you can see the one on the far right is the one that's in the lead at the moment. And then they keep swapping and changing places and things like that. It's pretty exciting, really, I would say. Um, in the original code, they go right to the end, but that takes quite a long time. So I've just shrunk the course to just 10 um, sort of characters if you like um, and so we're gonna have a winner very soon um, when it pops up and it'll say goal on there hopefully there we go so those are your sort of last but diamond wins I don't think uh, pl yeah play one hasn't got any money play two hasn't got any money <laughs> uh, play two there we go play two their prize and then how much money they got at the end um, and that's the game over but if you did have any money left over you'd be able to press yes and uh, get back on the horse um, so that is, I think, pretty advanced for a, I just can't imagine being able to have access to something like this in the eighties where you could literally program basic running off a, a coin cell battery. Incredible. It's also got a, um, a method for storing data. Um, and that's memo here. Um, and there's an item that's already in the list and that is comma separated so it's kind of like an array that's one line and then you've got two sets of data there so I've put Brian 101057 and then Philp 
12,956. And I think you can actually search. Yeah, there we go. So I can actually press a letter um, that, that I've got written in there. So if I press B and then I press memo, it will bring up the first B in the list. And then that number in the top right hand corner is the record number. So you could put phone numbers and things like that, but I think there's also a way that you can use the program in basic language to um, access data that's in there um, and retrieve it and react to things and stuff like that. So there we go, Casio FX730P. I'd have been over the moon if I'd have got that as a little kid, um, but I probably would have failed and had lots of errors when I was doing the programming, which is exactly what happened when I actually programmed it myself but the errors were quite easy to work them my way through. I've got a bit more patience than I probably would have had done in those days. Um, not a bad bit of kit.